During World War I, a group of determined and influential women, later known as the Hello Girls, worked in communication for the United States Army as switchboard operators. The women worked in the Signal Corps by volunteering to serve their nation during the epic of World War I. The 1900s was overflowing with powerful and driven women who were just as capable at a job as the next person, but held back due to gender and shortcomings of opportunities. The war served as an awakening to the nation for men and women alike. While serving in the war as a prominent group, the Hello Girls slowly broke gender barriers by giving women a chance to do more for themselves and their families, including receiving recognition as soldiers and performing in a man-dominated environment. Without them, involvement in the army and world would be much different than the present day, not only regarding women, but how they also affected the outcome of World War I. In the early 1900s, there was a shortage of switchboard operators. Men could not complete the job quickly or efficiently enough for the army's standards, unlike the hundreds of incredible women experts who became switchboard operators. Operation Breaking Gender Barriers, the Hello Girls of World War I. In the 1870s, following the Civil War, America started modernizing. There was an exponential growth in industries, politics, and the government. However, women still were not treated equally. While it seemed the country was growing, their ideals remained the same in relation to women and their rights. They did not even have the right to vote until after World War I, in which they served. While stationed in France, fighting for their country, they still did not have their voice heard. However, rather than being a secretary or a stay-at-home mom, a group of more than 200 women went to serve and make history. During their time, the Hello Girls faced discrimination, and that is part of how they received their name, the Hello Girls. When answering a telephone, the most common response is hello, hence the first part of the name. The second part was rooted from silly antics of men calling women girls. It was not until after the war when they had returned to the United States that the name became official. During World War I, Great Britain, France, Russia, Italy, Romania, Japan, and the United States were warring against Germany, Austria-Hungary, Bulgaria, and the Ottoman Empire. Like all wars, people are needed, whether it be for medics, frontline soldiers, leaders, or in the Hello Girls case, communications. General John J. Pershing, a military officer in 1917, needed telephone operators stationed in France to help communications between commanders and the front lines, potentially meaning the difference between winning and losing the war. If even for a portion of the day, messages could not travel, sharing commands or updates, the war could have taken a completely different path. Originally, men were put to the task of connecting these calls, but failed to do so since they are not nearly as efficient under pressure like women were. Men could not operate the switchboard easily, resulting in longer time trying to connect calls. General Pershing said, women have the patience and perseverance to do long, arduous, detailed work. Women were able to connect a call within 10 seconds, while men took far longer, equaling five calls in the time it took a man to do one. James Thayers said, They decided they need the best for the best. That type of workforce, telephone operators in America, 90% of them were women. So they said, well, you know, these are the best of the best, and if we want that, then we're going to have to go out and recruit them. Based on this data, the Army had finally recognized that women were the best fit for the job. So, in desperate times, General Pershing took the risk and sent the official request for women who can speak English and French equally well to volunteer for the positions. Within two days of the request, ads were popping up in newspapers, like the New Orleans Times Picaye. This newspaper was asked to help publicize the request. In the light of a new opportunity, over a thousand women applied, eager to break free of a restricting environment. Oliga Jorge was 19 years old when she applied to be one of the original Hello Girls, just like many others. In January of 1918, the first operators were appointed. A group of 223 women were chosen out of the multitude who applied. Originally, the army was only going to accept 100 volunteers. However, because of the huge number of women that applied, the army selected more than twice the number of people asked for. For three months, they were trained at Fort Lee in Maryland, where they took an oath and then were sent on their way to France. 
In March 1918, they arrived. The women started gaining a reputation, and they received more responsibilities. They were very skilled and efficient, and were eventually promoted to take on more risky calls at the 1st Army headquarters near the front. The operators had to translate and route extremely sensitive information regarding troop movement, supply, logistics, and ammunition between major Allied commanders. Military codes were also sent and translated between lines. This meant that these women had to be able to work at amazing rates while tired and mentally drained. There was no room for air. The switchboards worked amazingly and had intricate systems and codes that would be used with them. More specifically, the operator took any black cord and plugged it into the caller's line. She then pushed back the front key, which was in line with the cord, and said, Number please. After receiving the number, she then took the cord, which was directly in front of the black cord, plugged it in to the called number, and pulled the back key toward her to ring the party's telephone. When the party answered, the connection was complete. The Hello Girls were so essential in their roles during the war that they kept advancing. The first group of operators was divided between telephone offices in Tours, Chamont, and Paris. While some of the operators were able to work from the safety of an office, others would be startled by the sounds of German air raids and air raid sirens. The situation became too dangerous, and all but 10 women were sent to offices outside of Paris. At times, the bombings became too dangerous, and these women had to evacuate and seek shelter. On the other hand, when the war was over and all was done with, the women returned to an unpleasant time. The Hello Girls had to pay for their own uniforms, which could range from $25 to $40. They also didn't receive veteran benefits, medical care, or a military funeral. One woman, Isabel Valiers, was assigned as a supervisor to posts in Paris and Tours, France. After she finished service, she immediately submitted her claim for the $60 bonus granted to members of the American Expeditionary Forces, only to be denied because the work of telephone operators was not considered to be the work of veterans because of gender. However, after years of injustice done to those who served in the gruesome war, it was time something was done about it. In 1930, a fellow telephone operator named Merle Egan Anderson started the fight for U.S. Army Signal Corps Telephone Operators Military Benefits. Finally, after 60 years of injustice, in 1977, telephone operators were officially counted as veterans, and in 1979, the survivors were awarded, including Isabel Valiers, Louise LeBrenton, and her sister, Raymond LeBrenton. In 2019, women made up 20% of the Air Force, 19% of the Navy, and 15% of the Army. Not only are women in the military, but they are freely able to take on any job that they desire. This all started when 223 brave women decided that they were going to challenge standards. Women now can even be commanders in the Army or fight rather than just work in communications, but it all started in World War I. The Hello Girls were smart, resourceful, and most of all impactful to women for years to come. They served during World War I as switchboard operators in the Army with no fear. They helped women gain more rights and have the confidence to stand up for themselves. They even gained the right to vote two years after the war. They paved a path for others to follow, along with opening up new opportunities for women all around the globe. Although it took 60 years for the Hello Girls to be recognized as officials in the Army, along the way and even now, their story has broken gender barriers all throughout history. A direct impact the Hello Girls had was that they gave women a hope that they could do more than what was handed to them at the time. They lifted the morale of women for a better future. Up until 1918, Women were not often given the chance to prove themselves, so when an opportunity came about, the Hello Girls took it. Their actions reflect into the present, because after the women finally got their recognition for serving in the army, it was a final establishment that women have more roles in the world moving forward, and can do more than thought of them. The Hello Girls were the first women in the army, and continue to set an example of, to women and anyone, to break barriers and follow what they want to pursue in life, no matter who or what 
is against them.